So what the research says clearly is that the single most important in-school factor is the quality of the teacher. And this is why we've pressed really hard in Washington, D.C. to radically change the caliber of every single teacher. How do you do that? How do you start doing that and how do you make it effective? So you start by changing your selection around who you let into the classroom. We are one of the only countries who lets teacher all wise. of our C students become teachers. <laughs> when you look at Finland and you look at Singapore, you have to be in the top 10% of your class in order to be a teacher. And so um, there's a recruitment Do you have a lot of freedom to do that? Issues. Is there a lot of freedom or are you pretty yes. structured on we that? We have, no, we have, I mean, part of the challenges. We haven't been creative in terms of maximizing the things that we need to do to get there. We need to evaluate our teachers by taking into consideration a number of things, including how their students perform. Provide that feedback to teachers. Give them professional development to help them learn and grow. When I got to the district, we had teachers who hadn't been evaluated in some 20 years. In any profession, that is absolutely ludicrous. How am I ensuring that, I'm a, that the best teacher is in the classroom if I'm not providing consistent feedback and professional development opportunities for that person to get better? And we are recognizing and rewarding our highest performers. We hold a huge event at the Kennedy Center called a Standing Ovation for DC Teachers. And all of our teachers who are rated highly effective, which is the top of our evaluation piece, um, they are feted in grand style, um, like the Kennedy Center Honors. And we have, they have, um, they get bonuses and prizes, and we watch videos of them teaching. It's literally like the Academy Awards of teaching. And this is just because I don't know. Uh, is this based on like test scores? So, <laughs> you know, do, do, the, do the teachers have to like fill out a test to see how good they are, or the, how do you, how do you determine a good teacher? other than the kids' education? So what we look at, we do five observations over the course of a year. The principal goes into the classroom to see what's happening, and then we have what we call a master educator who's a professional teacher. Um, a highly regarded teacher who's a content expert. So, for example, I taught middle school Spanish. My principal really? was a, yes. My principal was a gym bien? teacher, <laughs> más o menos. <laughs> but my Yo también más o menos. <laughs> <laughs> My principal was a gym teacher. He couldn't assess what was happening in my Spanish classroom. And so if you're a foreign language teacher, we have a master educator who is a foreign language person Fabulous. who comes in to look at you. We look at those five observations. We look at things that you do above and beyond the classroom, because everybody knows a teacher is not just doing stuff in the classroom. We look at um, your student achievement, what happens on tests you give and on tests that the state gives. And we put all of that together can, to evaluate. Can I ask you, I'm sorry to take up. Say, please, please do, say, please do. Because this is important because we get an awful lot of uh, discussion in uh, conversations about public education about whether the unions are are good, bad, or other. What uh, Ms. Henderson is describing is something that came about through a, a resolution. They, the D.C. leadership and the unions, got together on that. So that was that's a, a I think progress for the kids that uh, the leadership of the school system and the uh, teachers unions uh, were joined together on. I, again, I'm just trying to uh, sure. understand better because it's a fountain of information. Uh, in Cuba, in dictatorships, there is a saying among the people that. The government pretends to pay me, I pretend to work. Uh, I presume that if you go into a school where the teachers have been there for 20 years and never being tested or required to prove how good or bad they are, that there may be among that class of teachers the you pretend to pay me, I pretend to work syndrome. How do you break through on that kind of a culture that isn't a culture of a year, but it's been 20, 30, or who knows how long? Have you been you watching know? what's been happening in D.C. over the last <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking. Years. Just asking. It is noisy. It's crazy. Um, we have had to, you know, it, it means fundamentally changing the status quo around how we interact with our teachers. And um, culture change doesn't happen in a year or two years. It takes um, years to create a new set of expectations, but that's what we did. We effectively said, this is what good teaching and learning looks like, and so this is what we're going to evaluate you on. And we're going to provide professional development and support. We'll show you videos to show you what we think the exemplar is. We'll provide rubrics. We'll work with you. Now, some people, you know, have gone kicking and screaming, and some of them needed to go kicking and screaming. Other people have grabbed a bull by the horns and said, yep, this is an opportunity for me to improve my practice to better reach my students, and so we're seeing some positive initial results. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I of course agree that teachers should be evaluated, and, and I fully agree that 
um, you know, doing it with um, you know, seasoned teachers and principals who are aware of the content of what a teacher is teaching as well as spe uh, special needs of the population that the teachers serve um, are, um, I think, crucial. Mm -hmm. I, I think that to the extent, this is where we may part ways, Kai, I, I, I think that to the extent that we're taking into account student test scores in teacher evaluation, I think we need to be very, very careful because there are so many different factors. I mean, I, I fully agree, agree that. that we, um, that we um, you know, need to do something now before we um, address poverty, that there are things that we can do to improve education at the same time. I think that if you, if you have a system that, that, that focuses too much on test scores and, and particularly on um, value added or, or test score improvements, you, you're basically... So what else would you include? Teachers. Well, you would include the ability to work with students in um, to to do well in portfolio. How do you gauge that? By 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 the same by the same way using the teach, uh, uh, peer and and principal evaluation, but you just wouldn't rely on the test scores. But or no, to no, I don't think I don't think there is an evaluation system out there right now that just relies on test sure, scores. Sure. It's the complete piece. But here's what I don't want to let up on. Um, we have, when I got to DC Public Schools in 2007, 98% of our teachers were rated as meeting or exceeding expectations, and only 8% of our young people were reading at grade level. So to ignore that, right, and to continue to say that these teachers are doing a good job when our children are not doing a good job is disingenuous. And so I think what we are all trying to do, districts and states all over the country are grappling with how to use student achievement data in evaluations, but I think we're at a point where we recognize you cannot say that teachers are good and their kids are not performing. We have to strike a balance, which is why it has to be a, we call it a pie. There are lots of different slices to the pie that tell you whether a teacher is performing or not, but student achievement has to be one of them. Test score is not the only way to measure them, but it has to be part of the pie. So just, just a, a quick add-on. Uh, add I mean, I think to the extent that you, you're looking at student achievement in other ways other than test scores, I think that's good. And I, and I think that in, in, in certain, in some school districts or, or some, some states like New York, where even if you theoretically are looking at a variety of, of factors in addition to test scores, you often have a situation where the test scores can be the determining factor. And that, I think, is, is, is where I, what I think is, is punitive and, and is really judging the teacher based on the quality of the incoming students' scores as opposed to the work that they're doing.